slick talker since a jet. Winter time, all the time, ooh. Yeah. Look at the way that I move. Swag. Disrespectful and I'm rude. Okay. I had cocaine in the school. Uh, Winner one hell of a kid. I am. Smoking gas, jugging me. I'm lit. What you doing? I done did. I swear. Slick talker since a jet. Finesse. I know that this what they want. Facts. Run up some money, I'm gone. I'm How's it going guys welcome back to another episode here i go by the name of it's 12 ng and in today's video we're going to talk about what does it take to make the world series now if you see on your screen right now you're going to see that i've made the world series four times when the game comes out that it's hard to make the world series because everybody's on the game day in day out people are grinding people are just really just so obsessed with the game and it's a lot harder to make the world series then now at this current time i think it's a lot easier seeing as there's not a lot of uh, people that are so concentrated on the game. They'll kind of lax around and lose some games just because, and they're not really taking it so seriously. And I think now I've been playing this game for like, say, uh, five years since MLB The Show 17. So give or take, you know, five, four years. Um, and yeah, I think it's the perfect time now to really show you guys what does it take to make the World Series. And I'm going to show you what I do every day before I go into a ranked season game. But first off, before we start, I just want to show you guys that um, my record. My record is currently 116 and 63. My batting average is 298. And you could ignore the ERA because I can't pitch. But yeah, I just want to show you guys, this is especially for people who are struggling to get into the 400s, the 500s, and anything past that, because it's only get, it's only going to get harder from there. If you guys don't know, uh, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not, I could be wrong, that All-Star in Division Series, the, the, level, the difficulty is All-Star, Hall of Fame and uh, Championship, and Pro Series, and beyond, is Legend. So... What do I do? I am going to show you my settings. I think that's the most important thing. It's basically what every YouTuber out there is doing or any good competitive person is doing out there. Of course, you want to have your hitting difficulty at Legend. Why? Because say if you're struggling in um, All-Star, if you're constantly hitting in Legend and all you see is fast pitching, because don't get me wrong, Legend is really hard and there's other way, there's another way where you can even make it even harder. But if you're constantly seeing Legend all the time, when you get into these All-Star games, every pitch is going to see a lot, it's going to seem a lot slower and you're going to be able to react more and this and that. Hitting view, strike zone. Obviously, we're not here to see the game and the presentation and see it for what it is. We are here to get better at the game, to hit more, to hit balls harder, to hit more home runs, and have really good uh, discipline on um, when, while we're playing the game. So that's why we use strike zone because strike zone gives you the best view to see to differentiate between balls and strikes. Now you don't, you may not think that's much of a difference, but once you get in there and you're really using strike zone, and if, especially if you're used to, you know, using um, I don't know, catfish or just regular MLB The Show 15 view or the catcher's view or whatever, etc, etc. You're really going to see the difference. And, and also, when you're using strike zone, you're going to have to react a lot faster because even though it may seem like you have more time, you really do not. Now, for the in-play view offense, it doesn't matter. You can go high, you can go medium, you can go dynamic. It doesn't matter. I use high because I feel like it's just a better view for me. It's more of a personal preference thing. Now this is the, the bread and butter here. The bread and butter is hitting interface and it's zone. Zone, for those who don't know, you basically have full control of where the bat is going. You have a PCI and basically the only way you're going to hit the ball is if the PCI is exactly on the ball and obviously you have good timing. Now why use zone? The reason why we use zone is because we want more control. More control obviously to impact results. In other words, when you're using directional and you're using buttons, you really don't have that much control. Yeah, with directional, you have a little bit more than buttons because obviously you're pointing in the area that you want to hit, but you're not necessarily saying, hey, look, I want the bat to be where the ball is, basically, you know? And that's what you have with zone. You have the ability to have that much control. And basically, every run that you score, every home run you hit, every ball that it's not like, let me just say, most of them are not just based on luck, it's also based on skill. And like I said once before, your friend Kyle McGunsky, all those top guys, those YouTubers, Cougs, all that, they all use zone. Um, now, obviously, we don't care about this. 
Um, when it comes to PCI Center, if for those who don't know, MLB, the Show 20, brought in a new thing where the PCI, you could customize it, change the color, this and that. Um, there are many ways you could uh, put the PCI. I only have the altitude where it's just, you know, say if you had the dots or the diamonds, all you would see were the dots and the diamonds. If you don't prefer that, the best, the next best thing you could do is you go to basic and then have the dots in the middle or you could just take the whole thing off and just have the outer. Uh, that's what I recommend. Like I said, every you, you go in there and when I mean you go in there in the custom practice, I'm gonna let you know what I'm talking about in a few. And you basically have to really find what works best for you. Obviously, I picked this color because I like it, the percent, it's all based on what I think is best for me. Now, when it comes to pitching, obviously, set it on legend. The next thing you need to do for me, I, like I said, for me it works well, but then again, I have a five ERA, so maybe this is not so much credibility to myself because I can't pitch, but I use pure analog. That's basically what you have control over here. You use the right stick, and you're basically full and have full control of it. It's not like the media where you just have to, depending on you clicking on red, yellow, it gives you how throw, but it's basically all on you. If you get if once the bar comes down, it comes back up. If you hit it right on the bar and hit it right where the circle is, but if you do exactly that, you should. And I say you should because sometimes the game makes you not be able to do it, but you should be able to hit your spots consistently. When it comes to the pitching view, of course, it's all preference. You could use strike zone, you could use from the pitcher, and you could use any other type of view, honestly, as long as you feel comfortable with it. Now, classic is on. That means that the ball marker stays on and never fades away. Confidence, you want the meter to be up. Obviously, this. Pitching, really, I keep it all normal. Default, whatever. It's not something I really care. Now, obviously, with button accuracy, we want the buttons. You want to click the button, let go when it, green, when it hits on the green, and that's it. Throwing meter on. Another thing that I do think you guys should have is throw canceling. If you get, if you have, you could copy all of this. Obviously, everything I really keep in order except for this throw canceling. If you don't know, throwing canceling is say if you wanna throw it first, but you're like, nah, I think I could get the guy on third, and you want to cancel. So either you double click or you click the button and click L1. He'll cancel his throw, and then all you gotta do is just throw the third. You know, so that helps a lot, especially during um, sorry, during um rundowns when you want to fake the guy out see if you don't have throat canceling you can never fake them out so there it's going to be really difficult for those who don't have throwing cancels to get the guy out, out on a rundown so um and that's basically it when it comes to base running i mean base running is the same thing but uh that's basically what i do if i move past a few things obviously you could just say it in the comments and i'll write back to you guys but like ah uh, now i want to show you guys um the bread and butter. And when I mean the bread and butter, I mean custom practice. Now, why is this so important? Now, I'm going to tell you why. Because you can literally sit here as long as you want, no interference, play against anybody, well, let's not say anybody, but play against specific people that you have a hard time um, hitting against. So for me, it's Chapman. Obviously, for me, I don't know about anybody else, but Chapman for me is really hard to hit. Um, so I picked the Yankees. I know obviously Chapman is on the Yankees and I picked Texas because I picked Joey Gallo Now some of you might be thinking why specifically Joey Gallo if you could pick my trial You could pick all these other good guys. I pick Joey Gallo because he has probably the worst vision in the game I don't know correct me wrong. He has 18 vision or maybe 20 his life series so the, the key point of this is that you want to basically what I got out of it is that if you're used to a small PCI and you keep missing it, just imagine somebody that has really good vision, say, I don't know, Barry Larkin, who has, I think, 125 vision, and the PCI is a lot bigger, you will know that you're going to get to that ball, and you're probably going to make contact with it. So it's just something that, you know, it's all mind games at in this particular point. You want to give yourself the worst scenario and hit really good with that worst scenario so when you have the best players or the best scenarios you're always gonna get hit so like I said before we're gonna pick uh, Texas we're gonna uh, the stadium doesn't matter but I always pick uh, ship it with custom practice I forgot to tell you it's all it's not only just hitting it's base running fielding pitching and batting so if you struggle pitching like I do 
you would be there and you would pitch for as long as you want. So that's what I do. You know, I'm really, this is what made me good. You know, I'm not saying I'm like your friend Kyle, McGunsky and all these people. I am better than I was before because before I was really bad. So in other words, so, so since we're talking about hitting here, because I think hitting is what maybe some of you guys might be struggling with. We're gonna put it on repeat, we're gonna put 3-0. If you wanna focus on fastballs, you put 3-0, and obviously you put Chapman, and then you put Gallup. Now, on Legend, this is why I tell you guys to put it on Legend, because look how small the PCI is here. Like, it's really hard, and obviously the ball comes in really fast. And this is what you wanna do. This is what's gonna get you good. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, if you guys have another method, I don't know, but I sit here probably 20, 30 minutes a day, and I hit against Chapman, and that's it, that's all I do. You know, if you wanna get, now if you wanna get fastballs and sliders in, obviously you put all counts, or you put one, two counts as I hit a home run there, and this is basically what you do. This is basically what's gonna get you good at the game. Like, I know it's gonna seem really boring it's gonna seem like it's not getting you better but if you sit here literally if you really want to get better and you sit here and try to hit Chapman as best as you can you will hit him eventually you know and you and you'll get used to it you start reacting faster and you will start hitting your home runs and and you're gonna get better I most of the time like I, I tell all my friends all my friends like look you want to get better this is where you go bro this is where you go. This is what you do. And you hit home runs off of Chapman and this and that. And say you're struggling, I don't know, against Cole. You create play. Do the same thing. And you put Gary Cole. Put 3-0. You don't throw fastballs. Or you put, uh, if you're struggling with all speed, you could put in 1-2 counts. And obviously, he's always going to throw an all, an all speed. So, there it is, folks. Right then and there. This is exactly what I do day in and day out before every ranked season game. And this is... Where I've been doing so that 116 and 63 record. This is the reason why I'm, I have that record. The 296 batting average that I have. This is why, you know. And for those who know me, I I wasn't good last year. I was not. I had a negative record, and my batting average was like 270 or whatever. But I stuck to it. And this is why I say consistency, consistency, consistency. This is not gonna be learned overnight. You using um, zone, you're not gonna learn it overnight. You know, this is gonna be a process that you're gonna have to keep doing day in and day out if you honestly wanna get better at this game. That's all I have to say for you guys. If you stay with it, if you follow everything I just said, you're gonna get better at this game. And that's about it. That's where I'm gonna wrap this video up. As always, thank you guys for watching the video. Like, comment if you're new, of course, sub because we do a lot of MLB The Show 20 content here, obviously. Hitting tips, we do a lot of ranked seasons and debuts and everything else. I go by the name of It's12NG, and I'm out. Peace.